Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and welcome to episode four of our weekly Lightroom edit. Now, this week we are switching it up. This is another recent shoot that I was on. Uh, my clients right here, this couple, they wanted to do a cool little downtown LA shoot. While we were down there, I kind of had this concept. I saw this street. Um, I also saw basically the, this library pedestal where I could stand and shoot kind of down the entire street. So what we did here was we, I basically had them go down a block. On my Canon 5D Mark II, I put on a 7200 millimeter lens and zoomed all the way out to 200 millimeters to get in tight as well as to compress this background. And what that does is it basically makes the street uh, look kind of a lot longer than it is. It pulls the background in closer to the subjects, creates a really nice compressed look to the image. Now we shot this at 3 20th of a second at f4 ISO 200. Now I knew that I wasn't going to have enough zoom basically on my lens to get into the crop that I wanted. So what I did on this is I just flipped my 5D Mark II to full raw. That way I had extra megapixels to crop down later in post. Um, so knowing these kind of tricks with your camera will help help you later on in post because you basically can know what you can do with your camera and what you can make up for in basically post-production. Not saying that you should make up for anything in post-production, but a lot of times you don't have exactly what you need. All right, so let's get started. And uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to actually correct my crop. I always start with my biggest adjustments first. Crop is one of those things that kind of bugs me, so I usually start with that first. Uh, let's first get rid of the information by hitting I. Let's go to full screen by hitting F twice. And now let's hit R to bring up our cropping overlay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the crop from here, and then I'm going to pull down from the top and just kind of get it in closer. I also want to correct some of the uh, tilt. There's a little bit of tilt, and if I correct all the way for this line that they're walking on, it's going to look slanted. So what I'm doing is actually correcting for the horizon line. So about right here looks correct. Okay. I'm going to try and kind of follow the rule of thirds of this. They're in the one-third corner right here. And uh, so we'll keep them right there. That looks about right. If it looks a little bit off, then we'll fix it later. Now, we always talk about having a vision before you start an image. Um, there are so many possible things that we could do with this image that would all look great. So what I'm thinking of is maybe doing like a vintage uh, kind of cross-process look with this photo. So let's do that. Let's start with our biggest adjustment first. I'm going to take up my brightness. We're going to brighten up our image so that basically we have correct skin tones on our couple. All right, so next let's move on to adjusting our temperature. Let's take our temperature up. And what I'm kind of envisioning is kind of a nice warm tone for the image, a lot of yellows, some kind of blues in the shadows, uh, just have a nice kind of that warm cross process kind of look. So I'm going to brighten up to about there. I'm going to take my brightness a little bit up higher. And now let's start adding a little bit of contrast into the image just to get it to pop a bit. And we can do, you know, what I'm going to do instead of, uh, I don't actually want to use any recovery or fill light in this, but what I'm going to do to kind of finalize this exposure is we're going to do a little tone curve action over here. Now, vintage images are, are very much characterized by having kind of deep shadows um, as well as really strong blown highlights. So we're going to pull up our highlights just to get them nice, bright, and kind of washed a little bit. Um, I'm going to pull down the mid-tones just a tiny bit and then maybe a little bit more shadow. Okay, that looks great right there. What we're going to do now is I'm going to adjust my clarity up. Again, I'm being careful not to go too high. I think about 30 is good. Let's take the saturation down and you'll start noticing that this image is going to start looking kind of like a nice vintage image. And what I'm doing here is I'm doing what I call uh, reverse saturation. And that's by taking saturation down and vibrance up. What it kind of has, uh, it kind of has this effect of reducing most of the colors and then enhancing some of the stronger colors. So like the bus, this yellow sign, some of the trees, those colors are still pretty powerful in the scene. And I, I kind of like that look. So we're done with our basic adjustments and with our tone curve, let's go down to split toning. This is where we're going to get that kind of nice uh, mixed toning color, that cross-processing look in our image. Let's start with our shadows. I'm going to click on the shadows. We're going to click right here in the blues. Um, we're going to pull it up until we have a nice amount of blues in the shadows across our image. That's about right right there. We can always adjust this if it's too much in a second. Let's go up to our highlights. I'm going to add some yellows into the highlights. So this effect, it's going to have this kind of nice cross-process mix of having yellow tones in our highlights and blue tones in our shadows, while keeping a little bit of the original 
uh, image tone colors. So I'm going to close that up about there. And then let's go back up to basic. Let's make a few more adjustments. We'll see if we kind of want to adjust vibrance and saturation a little more. So if I pull down my vibrance, you'll see that these colors become more flat. Um, I do like it up higher. So we'll take it up to maybe about 50. And let's kind of tweak our saturation now. I don't want to go up too high because see how powerful that bus orange gets. It gets way too overpowering in our image. So I think I'll go down to about 40 and we'll leave vibrance at about plus 49 or plus 50. I'm going to put in plus 50. Just I like round numbers. You know what I mean? All right, let's shrink this up. Now what we're going to do is go down to our uh, detail panel. Let's enhance our detail. Again, we're cropping in this image. They're really small and far away, so we're going to need to enhance detail quite a bit. So I'm going to pull up sharpening to about 80. I'm going to take the radius up to about 2 and detail up to about 30. That looks about right. We have a nice kind of grain quality to it right now. That doesn't look bad. And let's see what it looks like if we do a little bit of noise reduction. See, I don't want to. I don't know if I know, want to do any noise reduction. In this just because they're already that far away, and I kind of want all the detail possible, even if I have to trade off a little bit of noise in return. So that's fine where it's at. Let's tweak our split toning just a little bit more. I kind of want just a little more blue, and let's see what it looks like. Maybe a little less actually. Go towards the, there we go. Great, I like that. All right, and if we want just a little bit, you can always play with the balance too. Like if you want to balance it more on the shadow side versus more on the highlight side. For this image, I'm gonna balance it just a tiny bit on the highlight side. So let's go to plus 10 on the highlights, or plus eight, I'm gonna type in plus 10, easier that way. All right, that's great. Let's go down to our lens corrections. Um, there's not too much I want to do to this except for maybe just a little bit of just the natural lens correction vignetting. Just pull it in a little bit. You know, these these older kind of vignetted shots are another thing that's they're really characterized by is uh, vignetting. They almost always have these lenses that kind of have heavy vignette effects. Okay, that looks great where it's at. Now you can do a lot of things to this. If you guys like things like uh, the whole, what is it, the tilt shift look, you guys can grab a graduated filter, turn the uh, clarity and the sharpness all the way down to 100, and then apply it just from the middle going up. Whoops, sorry. We're going to go from the bottom going to the middle. Hold shift while I do it to constrain it. Add another one. I'm not a big fan of these effects, so I don't typically do them, but this is a shot that would actually work well on, and that's why I'm kind of showing you guys. So from here, I'm going to pull down from the top, and then we're going to go again, another one down from the top. And now we kind of get that faux uh, tilt shift effect just done in Lightroom. We will undo that because I'm not a huge fan of that look actually, to be honest. Let's undo it. Actually, we'll, we'll do one little layer of it just to kind of soften up. I think it's kind of cool to soften up the trees a little bit and maybe this, it kind of adds to the bokeh almost of the image and maybe one right here, but I don't want it to be heavy. I just want it to kind of have a softer look to it. And what I might do is actually just use my brush and just kind of paint in, you know, like these older lenses, they have a, uh, a very soft effect when stuff gets towards the edges. So if I just kind of soften up these edges a little bit, it'll kind of have a really nice, just an old school kind of look to it. I want to keep it, there we go. That looks great, guys. There's so much we can do with this image. We could turn it to a black and white. It would look great. This is black and white split toned. We can do whatever. So you guys kind of try your own variations of it. And, uh, and be sure to post it and let us know what you, you've come up with. So let's check out our before and our after. Here is the after, here's the before. So we've come a long way, strictly in Lightroom. And uh, great job, guys. That's it for this episode, and we'll see you guys with the next one. Bye-bye.